Hello and welcome back to the Reflector channel. This is a continuance of the series where we are restoring a 14 inch go-to Dobsonian telescope from Orion. In this video, we're going to be attacking the azimuth motor and the azimuth axis. Now this one has some slop in it. As you can see, I put tape here to show the movement. Um, just by hand, I can move this. Uh, it works out to about 2.6 degrees of movement. So you can think of that as plus or minus 1.3 degrees. Now to put that into perspective, the full moon is only about a half a degree wide, so the slop that's inherent in this system right now is about five, close to five full moon widths. It can basically slide back and forth just manually. That's without the gears uh, catching on whatever the clutch mechanism is in here. So I think the first thing we're going to have to do is take off this cover. And before we do that, we have to take off the friction plate. It's just a piece of metal there. And this is held on with a few Phillips head screws. Let's lift this off. So what do we have here? Here's the motor, and here's basically a gearbox that turns this worm gear. And this is going to turn this giant gear now this is interesting because um, I honestly thought there was just a lot of slot between this worm gear and the big disc gear but there's not it's all turning uh, it's locked together pretty tight it's almost like there's some kind of slop elsewhere uh, let's let's drive this and see what we get It's really weird. Um, the worm gear and this are very, very tight. So uh, these two, there's no slop at all between those. The slop is between this gear and the axle. You don't, um, don't do this at home because I don't know how your system works and I don't want you to break that. Uh, this is a nut that is held in place with these two set screws. Uh, I'm going to be removing this, but I want to make sure I put it right back where it was. So I'm going to make sure I measure that distance, which I've already done. Uh, it's exactly uh, 0.59 inches. And I'm just going to take this Allen wrench and unscrew that. There's one over here. And basically this is just a stack of discs. So this is an example of if it's not broke, don't fix it. But I am very curious about this. It's on there pretty tight. I'm going to set these so that I don't mix them up. Now that's interesting. There's a little bearing disc there. Nice and spinning bearings. Nice and shiny. I'm gonna keep this like this. Don't want to lose any order. Let's lift this guy off. Oh. This little motor is spring loaded like that. And this is like a felt disc. So this is, I guess, this is the clutch. And when you tighten this down, it smashes everything together. Uh, and when you loosen that, of course, it allows you to spin this by hand. But this is a very clean disc. I'm going to make sure I put everything back in order. I'm being very careful not to uh, drop this because I don't want to screw up the gears. And I don't want to get any oil on the bearing surface here. All right. 
steel on or steel on steel or aluminum or whatever. Let's take this disc off and see what we get. Look at that. That's just a little like a felt card. Look at that. So I guess this works just like kind of like a clutch in a car, right? You've got you've got these two steel plates that are squishing this um, bearing surface, which is just felt. Uh, that allows it to just slide over it very nicely. So here we are down to this. And I think we've discovered the problem. <laughs> Look at that. There's four little hex head screws that hold the bottom of the clutch to the shaft. They're all loose. So there was a problem with this. Let's go ahead and tighten those. Now the question is, should I use some thread lock? on these and I think I will because I don't want to have to tear this apart anymore so let's take these out how many of them are loose they're all loose look at that oh my goodness now somewhere down here is the encoder it tells the computer system that it's moved there we go all right, so let's go ahead and lift this disc off very carefully. Uh, okay, so this is a very heavy steel disc. There's some uh, grease on the bottom of that. Um, I guess that's to basically prevent the steel from melting, or uh, that's to prevent the steel from rusting to the steel. I'm going to set this down over here for a moment. All right, so what are we looking at now? Uh, or this is the encoder wheel, and this is the encoder itself. So as this all spins around, this stays still, and this tells it the angle that it's moved, and that's fed back to the computer. Uh, let me check to make sure that these four screws are tightened down. Oh, there you go. That's a good example. So you see how this stays stationary while the whole telescope spins around it. Well, all the tools are put away, and I'm recording this at the end, but I'll put this little snippet in the middle of the video. If you're enjoying the series so far on this restoration project, please push the like button and maybe consider subscribing. It means the world to small channels like this one. Yeah, I'm not going to mess with those. Um, I think the encoder works fine. So all I'm going to do is I'm actually going to rebuild this, okay? I'm going to put the bottom of the clutch back on. Okay, uh, I'll be cleaning the, the fingerprints off here pretty soon, but we're going to put the four screws back in, but we're going to use some thread lock. All right. I'm really surprised that the four screws were loose. I'm glad I took this apart. Okay, now let's do the final tightening. Now I'm going to basically get rid of these fingerprints. Alright, now we just rebuild it. Put the clutch disc back on, this felt uh, cardboard. And put the main gear back on. That's pretty clean still. Now this has to get the gear put on. There we go. And now for the big top of the clutch plate, I guess. Let me get rid of the fingerprints on this guy. There's a lot of fingerprints on this one. Put that on there. And the last thing is this, this nut with the set screws. Now there's the question, is it far enough? And if you recall, we measured it. Not yet.
That's pretty close. Wow, there's no slop now. Go figure. That's a little bit too tight. <laughs> you kind of have to do this by hand. Going back and forth. This is a final touch. You have to decide how much free slop you want uh, when you're not engaging the motors. Uh, and it also has to actually spin. And I think that might be good. If not, I'll have to come in and adjust it later on. Let's go ahead and tighten the set screw down. Now, when you tighten this thing down, it actually goes over this whole nut. And it pushes down on this, uh, this needle bearing here. And it, this basically squishes the clutch together even tighter. So, there is no more slop, but I can still turn it by hand. Pretty cool. But what about by motor? That's actually pretty good. And again, I should mention there's, no, there's basically no slop now. Okay, let's go ahead and put this back on. No slot. Does it drive? Look at that. There's no delay in driving either. That's it, it's fixed. Well, I think we've covered quite a bit in this video. The whole azimuth drive system has been fixed. We've gotten rid of all the slop. We got a chance to take apart the clutch and see how this mysterious machine works. I had a lot of fun doing this. I hope you had fun going along with the journey on that. You know, in the next video, we're going to be diving into the Lazy Susan that's sandwiched between these two giant uh, particle board discs here. And we're going to try to restore the needle bearings that are in there. Uh, I have a feeling they're pretty gunked up and we're going to probably have to replace the dust shield that's in there. So we only have a few things left. It's hard to believe that this restoration journey is on the final approach and we're going to be putting this to good use. Now, the comet that everybody has been looking at is, well, it's getting a little bit dim in the skies these days. So if you get a chance, please leave your opinion in the comments below as to what I should use this freshly restored telescope to view when I take it out into the night sky. Please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Clear skies, everybody.